The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. Rob McConnell here. We're coming to you from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Worldwide toll-free, 1-800-610-7035. Email exxon at exxonradiotv.com. On MSN Messenger, TV at hotmail.com. And our website, www.exxonradiotv.com, which will be changing over the next couple of days. And if you'd like to uh, go online and listen to the show with our compliments and the compliments of our advertisers and the Talkstar Radio Network, just go to www.exoneradio, I'm sorry, exonepodcast.com, exonepodcast.com. My guest this hour is a dear friend of the Exxon, Patrick Cook, has been... Oh, joining us periodically over the last 10 years. And uh, Patrick is the gentleman behind OracleResearchGroup.com. And this is a segment that we affectionately call the Cook Report. So, Patrick Cook, welcome back to the show, old friend. Thank you very much, Rob. Uh, glad, Pat- to, uh, glad to be back with you. Yeah, it's great having you with us. And uh, by the way, Exxon Nation, Patrick's, uh, Patrick is uh, just uh, feeling a little under the weather for today. That's why you may not have recognized his voice. I didn't recognize it, but, you know, these <laughs> things do happen. Hey, hey Pat, these, a lot clearer. these are crazy times. Oh, yeah, they are. Like you Not and I have been... Like you and I have been watching the world events for years, and I don't think there has ever been a time in the world's history where things are as crazy as they are right now. And they seem oh, yeah. to be emanating from the Middle East. Mm-hmm. Quite a few. You know, you've got the president of Iran at the United Nations, and while he's talking at the United Nations, Iran fired four missiles today to show their military flex of muscle. There's uh, there's high tensions between Iran and Israel. We have the uh, the nation of Islam going crazy over the stupidest goddamn movie I've ever seen in my life. Oh yeah. And, and it seems that this the movie wasn't the catalyst. They were. It seems that they were looking for an excuse and they found one. Now this doesn't include all the members of the of the uh, nation of Islam it doesn't uh, you know it doesn't enc- encompass everybody who who follows the muslim faith but it it's it's the it's the radicals that draw the negative attention to everyone well of course absolutely that's exactly what we're dealing with and of course Ahmadinejad uh was on uh, let's see uh, Piers Morgan. Yeah, he did a great. What, 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 yeah, what did I say him? Yeah, Piers Morgan but, uh, last it, night on CNN he did a fantastic job Piers yeah, and uh, what you have to understand here is that uh, every single candidate that runs for the presidency in Iran mm-hmm. is approved by the Ayatollahs. You remember the guys who kidnapped, who were in charge, yep. who came into charge and kidnapped our hostages back during the Carter administration? Mm-hmm. The same guys are still there, and they're the ones that are running it. And of the 45 candidates that ran for the presidency when Ahmadinejad won and was reelected, Every one of them has to be approved by the Ayatollahs, and they personally handpick who's ever going to get it. So do, you're not talking to no. Armina Jai. He's nothing more than a parrot. Do, do you so know why they're called? Do you know why they're called Ayatollahs? I'm not exactly sure. Why don't you tell me, Rob? Well, it's because they say Ayatollah, you this. Ayatollah, you that. Yeah. That's <laughs> that's why they're called day. Ayatollahs. That's <laughs> it. That's it. Uh, over the next hour, Pat and I are going to be discussing everything from um, the U.S. politics, new voter laws, to the strange, the weird, and as always, the bizarre. Exo Nation, if you'd like to visit a very in-depth website that is filled with information, www.oracleresearchgroup.com. That's www.oracleresearchgroup.com. 
oracleresearchgroup.com. Patrick Cook is my guest for this hour, and Patrick and I will be back on the other side of this two-minute commercial break here in the X Zone. Once again, if you'd like to uh, go and listen to the archives anytime, day or night, with our compliments and the compliments of our advertisers and the Talkstar Radio Network, just go to www.xzonepodcast.com. Also, if you'd like to see the movie Innocence of Muslims, or Innocence of the Muslims, or Innocence of Muslims, you can just go to our uh, news page at www.exonenews.com. We do have it available for you online in a site that YouTube can't dictate to us what we can show you and what we can't. We'll be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the x radio show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x broadcast network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Hi everyone, Rob McConnell here, and I wanted to spend a moment on internet streaming. Everybody has heard about internet streaming, but not many know much about it. Did you know the internet streams just about everything? Movies. From new releases to old classics. TV shows. Almost every show, every episode, and much more. But the question has always been, how do you do it? Well now, thanks to the folks at 123 Ready TV, I have the answer for you. They have developed a simple program app, 123 Ready TV, that you install on your Windows PC, Android smartphone, or Android tablet that can have you streaming like a pro in less than five minutes. You truly won't believe how much is available or how easy it is to do until you try. And for a one-time cost of only $19.99, this product is a real winner. To learn more about 123 Ready TV, visit our website at www.xzbn.net. Hello, I'm Justina Marsh, and with my dad, Pete, we are going to present a new show called Too Good to Be True. Together, we are aiming to discover more truths about this world and beyond. Do you have unanswered questions about the world? Do you ever wonder about aliens, conspiracy theories, or the universe? There are many shows discussing subjects such as pyramids or UFOs, but we want to relay this information based on our own research, including from spiritual means. Hopefully, listeners will be helped with their own beliefs and will appreciate the psychic insights that add to the previous research and information. We both look forward to sharing this insight and beginning this journey with our listeners. Visit xzbn.net for more information about when to listen. Welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. Uh, I've, I've got to tell you, I, I find no reason or no rhyme in what's happening in the world today. Oh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, the, the movie Is Innocence of Muslims came out by this, by the uh, director, Sam Baselli. We found out that that's not his real name. Yet, yet according to experts in, in the judicial system, they still haven't proved beyond the shadow of a doubt that Basili is the person they think he is. Now they're also tie, making ties to the Coptic religions, and uh, not only in Egypt, but here in the United States as well. The, the video has been on the intertube, internet, intertube, yeah, internet since uh, July, and it was only, in t- it was only when the, the Arabic subtitles were put in that uh, this, this video went viral. And it's been blamed for the rash of civil unrest uh, in 50 different countries now around the world. But when it started, 
the protesters, the terrorists, the, the hooligans, the, the morons, I should say, were targeting the United States of America. And then they started targeting Germany. Then they started targeting the British, uh, you know, the, the United Kingdom. It seems that they are just a bunch of angry people. And if this is the way they are presenting how they exhibit their anger... I, you know, like I shudder to think when these protests, and I'm not a psychic, but these protests are going to find their way to our shores. And what is going to happen is they are going to use the rights, the freedoms that we have in Canada and the United States against us when we try to stop the protests. Pat Cook's our special guest, www.oracleresearchgroup.com. And, and Pat, how do you think this is going to play out? Uh, do, you, do you agree with me, or do you have your own opinion on what is going to happen, and do you think that it's a real possibility that these, these protests and demonstrations will find them their way to the United States and Canada? Well, I'm certain they will in small numbers, but one mm-hmm. of the things that we have to realize here, Rob, is you're not talking about the majority of the populations of these countries. They're talking about a very small percentage. Mm-hmm. Most of the people in the Mideast, and surprisingly, actually Iran, I mean uh, Iran itself, view the, the West favorably. It's only the conservative view in this country that we're hated. Uh, and, of course, we give them reason to from time to time. But here within the United States, we do have a very loyal citizenship of Mideast uh, citizens. And uh, I think that what will happen is that hopefully within their mosques and within their communities. Now, a mosque is not a church as, it, as such. It's a community center. Mm-hmm. And what they do is they get together and they talk about things. They do worship and, and what have you, but generally there's, they, they, it's, it's like a, a center for them. And the mosques are trying to quell this as much as possible because they don't want, the, they don't want this kind of trouble. The very last thing they want is Dearborn, Michigan blowing up, which is where we have a majority of Muslim people. And I think that, that they will try their best to do it. If not, we do have a rule of law, and that rule of law must prevail in things like that. We can't allow people to get harmed. I mean, look, our ambassador was killed. Yeah. A lot of people are getting injured and killed around the, the, the world, around in the Mideast, because of these things. And the rule of law must prevail, just as the will of the people must prevail in this country. So I think what will happen is that it will quell... Eventually, and I think as long as, you know, you've seen these things come and go, Rob, I have mm-hmm. too, many times. So hopefully it's winding down and you're seeing less, and I've, 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 I've been all over the news today, and I've seen very little mention of it at all. Yeah. So what I think is happening is that there's a flare-up. Uh, I think this man, but, and, and let's let's make something clear here for the audience so they know. The actors in this movie claim, and I have a tendency to believe them, that they were not aware of the fact that they were making an anti Muhammad movie. Yeah, I agree. These things were dubbed in after the movie was made, and yet they're still receiving death threats. But you see the effectiveness of the jihad that people carry out. Look at one Salman Rusty. I saw him on TV last night being interviewed, and he has a $3.5 million dollar um, stake on his head. So a lot of this is more made up than, than you know you could possibly believe. But uh, hopefully not. If it does, Rob, that's what the cops are for. Yeah. And 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 they they will do the best they can. And it's not going to be an all out assault. It's the same thing. <laughs> the same fear that we've got. It's like in Oklahoma, less than one tenth. Let's see, less than point three percent of the entire state of Oklahoma is Muslim. Yet 75% of the, blue, of, of the people in Oklahoma voted to outlaw Sharia law. Wow. <laughs> you couldn't get Sharia law. You see, people think, okay, well, you know, you hear this, they're going to bring Sharia law into the country. You can't get Sharia law into this country. We mm-hmm. have a constitution. Yeah. And, and virtually nothing within that, that set of laws would, would uh, do anything but violate. Now, speak, now, speaking about U.S. laws, you folks have a, a, a presidential election. I think it's about 45, 46 days away. Uh, yes, Governor Mitt Romney, President Obama. 
but there seems to be a bit of controversy about voter ID laws now in the United States yes. and how they actually may have an outcome on the winner. Yes, uh, 15 states in this country have passed these draconian uh, <coughs> excuse me, voter ID laws. Mm-hmm. And basically what they do is they require an ID, a photo ID, which has never been required in this country. Unfortunately, uh, the, the problem is, is that they, they pass these laws as a solution to a problem that does not exist. The Justice Department and all agencies that have studied this effect, George Bush spent millions of dollars trying to find voter fraud in this country, couldn't find a single case. The, the amount of um, voter fraud detected in this country over the last 10 years, get this, is one in 15 million. Wow. That means that less than 20 cases per election could possibly occur. Less than the, uh, the, the actual chances you have of being struck by lightning. It is a cure for a disease that does not exist. But many minorities in this, and minority groups within this country vote Democratic. So all of these laws have been put forth by the conservatives here in this country trying to restrict and oppress the ability of blacks and Latinos to vote because of the fact that a lot of them don't have actual photo IDs. And they're even going so far as to preventing students from using their student IDs, which have photos on them, because they might possibly be from out of state and they don't want them to vote. Oh, so, yeah. But it's, it, 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 slowly but surely, the courts are knocking down these laws, and even other groups are trying to get people registered and get them photo IDs so that we can counteract the conservative influence on the election. You know, sitting in, sitting here in Canada is one thing. Watching what's going on in our in the best neighbors a country could ever have, the United States. Being in the states yourself, Pat, and having your fingers on the pulse of what is going on in the U.S., how do you see the U.S. presidential election outcome? Oh well, um, <laughs> Mitt Romney seems to not understand where he is or what he's doing. <laughs> uh, Barack Obama seems to be leading. In all of the polls everywhere, and a brand new poll just came out that puts him up 51 to 44 uh, percent as a whole. You and know, as long and now here's the thing: this is important. Okay. As long as Romney stays in the tailspin, which he is, and he keeps putting his foot in his mouth every time he turns sideways, which he does. And Obama keeps his mouth shut. <laughs> everything's going to Barack Obama's going to sail through. Uh, he's already up, uh, you know. Uh, well in excess of 150 points in the electoral count. So I do believe, certainly, that he has a very good chance. Now, anything, of course, we know, anything can change. Mm -hmm. Uh, But he's favorable in all the polls, and so far, Mitt Romney seems to be the most unpopular presidential candidate in history, and that's according not to the the liberals, Mm -hmm. that's according to the conservatives themselves. So it's going to be a very interesting race. It's Although her- Romney refuses to recognize this, he claims that he's running neck and neck, and he's not. Well, how about the presidential, uh, vice presidential candidate, Paul Ryan? What's your take on him? Well, Paul Ryan is a, an extreme conservative, uh, and about the only thing we really know about him is that he is a fiscal conservative who follows Ayn Rand and a very, very conservative philosophies. The most important thing about him is his budget, and his budget is intended to do great harm to the American economy. He wants, I can sit here all day and talk about how bad his budget is. They have submitted that budget 35 times, the same budget, over and over again, and every time it goes to the Senate, it gets shot down. They just keep pounding it. So now he's joined with Romney, Mm -hmm. but this man is constantly making misstatements, and that's one of the problems. And he was booed at the uh, uh, AARP, uh, and and the only time you'll notice that the only time Paul Ryan goes anywhere is he goes to conservative places. He is not liked in any other places because one of the things he wants to do is he wants to gut Medicare, which seniors depend on, and we depend on, I'm a senior citizen. I don't have Medicare yet, but my wife does, and we, you know, we depend on that. It's mm-hmm. probably the equivalent of your Canadian 
uh, health system. Yeah. It's the only time we get it. We have to wait till we're 65 to enjoy it. <laughs> but uh, he wants to gut that. He wants to cut, gut Medicaid. He wants to fire teachers. And, and all they want to do is give tax increases to the, to the middle class and the poor mm-hmm. and give tax cuts to the rich. Uh, the average person in this country, if, if they get elected, the average person in this country will probably pay about $4,000 more a year. Wow. That's 400 a month in taxes. While the rich, anybody that makes over $400,000, will get a tax break of about $250,000. And Romney himself will get it. Yeah, well, he well, here and drove over, uh, what, $12.5 million last year. Yeah. Unreal. No. Patrick, always great talking to you. Stand by, old buddy. You and I have to take our news right. break. Exxon Nation, Patrick Cook is our special guest. This is the Cook Report on the Exxon Radio TV show. Patrick's website, www.oracleresearchgroup.com. And uh, Patrick and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break as the Exxon continues from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hi everyone, Rob McConnell here, and I wanted to spend a moment on internet streaming. Everybody has heard about internet streaming, but not many know much about it. Did you know the internet streams just about everything? Movies. From new releases to old classics. Almost every show, every episode, and much more. But the question has always been, how do you do it? Well now, thanks to the folks at 123 Ready TV, I have the answer for you. They have developed a simple program app, 123 Ready TV, that you install on your Windows PC, Android smartphone, or Android tablet that can have you streaming like a pro in less than five minutes. You truly won't believe how much is available or how easy it is to do until you try. And for a one-time cost of only $19.99, this product is a real winner. To learn more about 123 Ready TV, visit our website at www.x. ZBN.net. I just couldn't help that one. I can still see Clint Eastwood up there talking to an empty chair. Pat, do you think Eastwood went off the deep end with that one? Well, basically what he did was he walked on the stage, asked him for a chair to sit in, and then proceeded to turn it into a prop. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was not impressed by that at all, and I'm really sorry. Because I do have a great deal of respect for the man. Yeah, in fact, uh, uh, Laura and I went and saw his uh, latest movie on Friday. The what's it called? The Curve. How was that? Excellent, excellent. Good, Clint good. Eastwood, John Goodman, Justin Timberlake. Fantastic movie. Fantastic. Great, it, great. it was one of the. It, in my opinion, it is the way movies should be done. There was no. Did killing. he direct that as well? Yes, he did. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic job. Anyway, I don't want to spoil it for the listeners. Let's take a look at the hard news, Patrick. Uh, Let me see. Uh, Ancient life could return to Canada as Arctic warms up. Does that mean old politicians are going back to Ottawa? I don't think so. (laughs) But (laughs) but it's an interesting interesting thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Let's see. uh, uh, The study was conducted by the University of Montreal's Department of Geography. Right. uh, And... um, According to the data model, climate uh, conditions on Bylet Island, do you know where that is? Mm, no, I don't. Yeah, we'll be able to, they'll be able to support the kind of trees that we found in the for- fossilized forests up there. Wow. So in other words, what's happening is it's melting down, and the conditions are going back to the, to the paleo, paleo, blah, 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 whatever age when all those older trees were growing. Mm-hmm. And uh, who knows, because of the fact that the seeds may be, excuse me, may be there, they will... Um, uh, be able to start growing again. Um, and 
the forest, the fossilized forest that is there now, mm-hmm. they estimate between uh, two and three million years old. So it, it's going to be interesting if uh, if that kind of thing starts happening. Here, here's a here's a here's a hypothesis, Patrick. Since the right. since global warming is going to be affecting the the uh, the trees to a point where they're going to be able to grow again. Is it possible then any major or any unknown source of virus or bacteria that has been suppressed by the cold can now come back to life and affect uh, affect the planet Earth? That's scary, isn't it, Rob? Yeah, it sure is. And I I agree. That's definitely something that I would be worried about. I'd be worried about, and you know, there's all kinds of possibilities. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have we have developed immunities to diseases. Look what happened uh, here in the United States when the Europeans brought their uh, here and up in Canada too. When they brought when the Europeans came in and brought their diseases with them, they yeah. wiped out a great number of people. Uh, you could take a blanket that was just uh, cough on it and give it to the Indians and have them be dead by the morning. In fact, that's so, what happened with the uh, with the U.S. Cavalry. They they gave yeah. the Indians blankets infected with smallpox. Yes, my grandmother was a, was a school teacher up oh, on the yes. Navajo Reservation when the U.S. Health Department decided to come in and give kids their basic shots, uh, the Navajos' basic shots. 35 kids died before they stopped it because they didn't realize that they have no immunity to these diseases. And, of course, what you're talking about, whatever those diseases are, or whatever those uh, mm-hmm. strains are that come out of those forests, uh, who knows what they could do? And, uh, and still uh, touch you know, have a pandemic overnight. Exactly, and still talking well, a about of them. and still talking about um, the global uh, global climate change. A melting Greenland weighs peril against potential. Oh yeah, it's it's getting really bad. Uh, Greenland. Uh, is is a very sensitive country, and what's uh, you know it's a, it's a it's a huge landmass, and what's happening is the ice is melting rapidly, mm-hmm. and diff- it's different from Arctic ice, and you know from the North and South Poles, and different from many glacier areas and things like that, because this sits on land. Now, when this ice melts, it's going to start raising sea levels, and of course the 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 people that live in and around these areas, when the ice goes, they go because they, they depend on the ice. For the livelihood, and a lot of a lot of things change. So what's happening is it's going to make a, a culture change as change as well as a, uh, a rise in sea level. And if you go, if you look at things, if you type in Blue Line mm-hmm. Hawaii, and you see what could happen potentially happen to Hawaii just in the next few years, uh, that shows the Blue Line where the water could come up. New York is preparing right now. Uh, many, and of course we we know that uh, great seaports and things like that around the world are slowly but surely uh, putting in all kinds of flood barriers and things like that because the sea levels are rising and islands are disappearing. And uh, they're planning, you know, they're moving nations, uh, entire island nations, off to other areas because they know that they're not going to have any, anything left. So it's going to be a big change, and, we, and, and unfortunately mm-hmm. we're not doing anything to turn the tide. We're just simply pumping more gas into the air and causing, and, and there was a, you know, a perfect uh, example. And this is very important for people to understand. This was on 60 Minutes, and this guy was standing next to a marker that had been placed two years earlier. Uh, and there, way off in the distance, you could see the edge of this glacier, how far it receded. And so the 60 Minutes uh, investigator asked him, he says, okay, now I want to ask you a question. If we stopped doing what we're doing, if we turned off every engine, if we stopped every train, if we stopped every coal fire, every coal plant, Mm -hmm. everything, if we stopped polluting, just dead stop everything, how long would it take before it would change? And he said, it's not going to change. Because that stuff is up there, it's lighter than air, and we don't have vacuum cleaners that can go up there and clean it up. What you see happening now is going to continue to happen as long as it's up there and we don't have any logical way of getting rid of it. And But instead of stopping it, we're actually increasing it at the rate of 3% per year. <laughs> and that's totally insane. You know, so uh, we're going to have to... An- another uh, another, another uh, result of global warming is the food prices and, and the crops. And Laura and I today, before the show, stopped at a local orchard where we buy our apples and other farm produce. 
And the apple crop here in Ontario, as well as the corn crop in Ontario, is more than 50% less than it was last year. Yeah, and it's getting, and it's getting worse and worse. Uh, of course, you're, uh, you're finding some of the finest wines in the world being grown in Britain now. Yeah. Are being, uh, being vintage in Britain. Olives being grown in Britain. Things are changing all around the world. What we're talking about here is agflation insofar as what's happening. The drought, the extreme drought we have that's covering over half of the United States right now is causing a real serious problem in all kinds of things. And, of course, I don't know what the weather's like up there. You, know, you guys having extreme uh, temperatures up there as well, extreme hot temperatures? Well, we were having extreme temperatures during the summer, but it seems as soon as we, we, we reached the 1st of September, everything went back into line, and now we're looking at seasonal temperatures again. That's amazing. Yeah, well, we had a very bad winter last year here. Yeah, sure did. We don't know what to expect. It did snow up in Wisconsin, mm-hmm. uh, I believe, over the weekend. But uh, to bring in the fall, which, by the way, has uh, been here for a couple of days, and it's showing around here. But uh, the, uh, the problem is, is the United Nations is saying that food prices could rise drastically world, globally and here in the United States. Uh, we have a huge uh, vegetable garden out back, uh, so we're going to try to, you know, <laughs> stay dependent on that as we can. But, you know, even, even though I've got... Uh, Two uh, six by twenty four foot beds mm-hmm. and a greenhouse. Uh, that's still not going to be enough to feed us all the vegetables we need. But um, uh, certainly, uh, we're very fortunate here in the state of Connecticut, where I live, because we've had very good rain, and there is a, there are a lot of local farmers that are producing a lot of good produce, and it's staying at a reasonable price right now, and hopefully it will stay that way. Exxon Nation, our guest this hour is Patrick Cook. And his website is www.oracleresearchgroup.com. That's www.oracleresearchgroup.com. All right, Pat, let's take a look at another headline that you sent us that just kind of uh, just kind of made me laugh because this is something that you and I talked about many times years ago. The drugs don't work. A medical, modern, medical scandal. No kidding! <laughs> What's happening is, you know, the uh, the drug, the, the, the FDA, well, this is specifically here in the United States. I do not know anything about how it's controlled in Canada. But here in the United States, the, the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, allows the companies to run their own tests. And so they're perfectly free to hide any results that don't work. And what's happening is that, and, and if you say, I don't know, do you guys have drug commercials on TV as, as advertisements, see your doctor, and they read off this list of stuff that includes everything from, yep. from, from broken legs to, to, to sudden death <laughs> if you take this drug. But see your doctor, see if it's right for you. <laughs> and I, do they have that up there? Yeah, yeah, we watch them on the American channels, but I've got to ask you this, where it says, you know, uh, and and see if see your you know they want you to go to your doctor to ask them if this is going to work and then later on in the commercial they say, you know uh, you know this that and the thing like you just said the the cause and effects of taking the drug, and then it says make sure that your doctor well hello you're going to the doctor to get the prescription don't you think the doctor would already know if you could actually take that prescription or not? Well, of course, who's telling him? Who's giving him the information, Rob? Oh, okay. The guy who sells the drugs. Yep. That's where he gets his information. He gets it from them, and if it's not in the PDR, the physician desk, desk reference, and all these new drugs aren't, they have to rely on the on the salesman. They're the only ones that know about it. So the salesman will tell them, "Oh yeah, they can take that." But see, the the test the, the, the they're tested by the manufacturers in poorly designed trials uh-huh. on hopelessly small numbers of weird, unrepresented patients and analyze using techniques that exaggerate the benefit. That's, that's one of the problems. Uh, uh, and, and it's just getting worse and worse and worse in every area. And here's a statistic that most people don't know. 75% of the time, mm-hmm. when you go into your doctor and you say, I saw this drug on TV last night, he's going to give it to you. 75% of the time. 
And there was a doctor who got infuriated with this. He was a, he was a lead doctor at a major hospital. He went around. He said he told a guy, a, a friend of his, or one of the, one of the other one of the orderlies, to go into the. He wanted to go floor by floor, and he wanted to uh, take every single drug paraphernalia that they gave them, all the all the perks they gave them, the cups, the calendars, blah 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 blah, all over the hospital. Mm-hmm. I ended up taking seven vans full out of that hospital. Whoa. Not just one trash can. Seven vans full out of that hospital. So they're after you a hundred times. Uh, Unbelievable. But, yeah, and it just goes on and on. It's that way in every single area. <coughs> the cancer profession, for instance, has not changed its, its regimen. They, they started using uh, uh, drugs that are based on mustard gas that was used during World War II. And they haven't changed in over a hundred years. They have just simply, uh, they just simply can't get off that zener, and that's one of the problems. I mean, uh, if you can't, if you can't adapt, uh, then things are a problem. And this is why um, the mortality rate is so high. Uh, we need preventative care. We don't need to treat the symptoms. We don't need to treat people after they're already sick. Like in China, you don't get paid if so. You don't get paid if the patient gets sick. You only get paid if the patient stays well. Now, does that's what we need in this country. Now, that makes perfect sense to me. Of course it does. Yeah. You know, there, there was another article that you sent us, Pat, that goes hand in hand with this. Animals are conscious and should be treated as such. Where did these people get these, these, these moments of, boing, the light goes on? Like I don't know. I don't know. Uh, well... Uh, a bunch of scientists at the University of Cambridge got together and decided to to um, uh, have a memorial conference. And basically, what they're saying is that non-human animals have a neuro anatomical, neurochemical, and neuropsychological substrate of conscious. That and and uh, you know, I put that article in that I basically well, I put it in to ask you more than the actual article itself. What is your opinion on this? Do you think animals have a conscience? Uh, you know what? I do. I do. And having had the opportunity of, of owning pet stores uh, as well as working as the director of communications for the, for the SPCA, working, oh, working in law enforcement uh, with the canine officers and, and their partners, I know for a fact that animals have a conscience. We have three dogs here. And, and you know what? They're smarter than than a lot of people would ever give credit to. And, and I look at it this way, that a person who comes up with this and says, you know, geez, I think that an animal has a conscience, is a person who's never owned a pet. Right. Well, we've got a beautiful German Shepherd. She's an 85-pound puppy. Uh, absolutely, and and she's, she's bred old world uh, as an old world shepherd. She's got beautiful bone structure and things like that. And this is one of the most intelligent animals I've ever seen. And I've had German Shepherds all my life. Yeah. It's absolutely amazing. And, of course, you see that in, you know, even parrots, fish. I had an octopus that liked me in a, in a salt tank I had at one time that used to come running toward the front of the cage, toward the front of the tank every time I walked in the wow. building, believe it or not. I do believe it. Stand by, <laughs> Patrick. You and I have to take our final break for this hour. Exxon Nation, Patrick Cook is our special guest. And Pat joins us on an intermittent basis, but we're going to try and uh, get Pat on a little bit more in the future. He presides over what we call the Cook Report. His website is www.oracleresearchgroup.com. That's oracleresearchgroup.com. And this song is just for Clint Eastwood. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hello, I'm Pete Marsh. With my daughter Justina, we will be presenting the new radio show, Too Good To Be True. If something seems too good to be true, it usually is. But with the help of Justina's amazing gifts, we're going to gain insight into questions that don't yet have complete answers. 
Have you wondered who built Stonehenge and for what reason? Why are crop circles found in the same region as Stonehenge and elsewhere? Are crop circles a hoax or are they created with technologies that we have little knowledge of? Who built the pyramids in Egypt and also in other countries? How and why were they built? Was the Titanic switch with the Britannic as part of a gigantic insurance fraud or for more insidious reasons? What caused the Tunguska event when trees were flattened over an 800 square mile area in Siberia? Will the new insights be too good to be true? Well, that will depend on what you are prepared to believe. Please join us as we start on this journey together. For more information on Too Good To Be True, visit www.xzbn.net. Dreams are our personal gateways into infinite wisdom. Don't miss Shamanic Counselor and Indigenously Trained Dream Decoder, Sandra Corcoran's inspiring book, Shamanic Awakening Between the Dark and the Daylight. This remarkable work chronicles Sandra's 35 years of experience with diverse wisdom keepers and her initiations throughout the Americas and across the British Isles, Turkey, Greece, and Egypt. Sandy's knowledge of symbology, psychology, and myth influence her dream blog and workshops. Sandy offers private tarot readings, international journeys, a meditative CD, as well as her book, Shamanic Awakening, to encourage you as you navigate this earthwalk, creating a deeper connection to yourself and all that is. Find this and more at Sandy's website, starwalkervisions.com. And welcome back, everyone. I'd like to take this opportunity of thanking all our guests tonight. It's been a great show. And uh, I'd like to thank you, the members of the Exo Nation, for listening to the show and spreading the word around the world. This is our 20th year of doing the Exxon Radio Show, and uh, we're looking forward to at least another 20. Patrick Cook is my special guest, www.oracleresearchgroup.com. He's the guy behind what we affectionately call the Cook Report. That's www.oracleresearchgroup.com. As always, Pat, great having you with us, and I love the stuff you send. Uh, but let's, let's end this one up on a chuckle. Mayan calendar set to expire. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. 100 days left. Uh-oh. 100 days, and yep. then the world goes poof. And when it's all over. Oh, jeez. <laughs> we're going to do a show after it? Oh, you bet. We're, we're going to do... You know what you and I should do? I'm, I'm putting together some of what I consider to be the best guests, and, and you fall into that category beyond a shadow of a doubt. We should do one uh, on the 21st. How about we do the, the 20th, 21st, and the 22nd? That'll work for me. Be glad to. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so insane. <laughs> Ask the Mayans if they believe it; they'll tell you you're crazy. <laughs> yeah, that, that that's true. But it's and making money for somebody. It, it, exactly, because you know what? We've been down to Mexico. We've talked to the Mayans; they laugh. You talk to people who are in the know; they laugh. And then when people who have been sucked into this this hype realize that the entire hype was you know, started by a guy who was into hallucinogenic drugs, and this entire concept came to him in a hallucination. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> it's totally insane. But, you know, we've seen worse. <laughs> Camping we've... was the last big one. Oh, uh, my gosh. Yeah, well, you yeah. know, look over the years. We had Y2K. We had Hale Bop. We've had, um, uh, oh, gosh. And don't forget Prophet Yahweh. Oh, Prophet Yahweh. I haven't heard from him lately. He's gone. He is? I haven't heard a word out of him. Do you think that he... anything out about him. He probably got abducted by the spaceship that he kept on seeing. Probably back in prison. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Pat, as always, great talking to you, my friend. I look forward Definitely to the pleasure, next time Rob. you're with us. And uh, I hope you feel better. Whoops. Is this my cue? Thank you so much. All right, buddies. All right, I get the hint. Craig and Master Control, you're... Not as subtle as you used to be. Oh, you hit the wrong button. I see what happened there. Anyway, Patrick Cook has been my guest this hour. A great guy. www.oracleresearchgroup.com That's www.oracleresearchgroup.com Well, that's it for tonight. I'd like to thank everyone around the world for listening to us. You can listen to the archives at exonepodcast.com. Our website, www.exonradiotv.com will be changing over the next couple of days. 
And, and as always, if there's some way you can help someone who's less fortunate than you are, please do. We are our brother's keeper. We're all here on this planet together. So until tomorrow night, as once again we cross the time-space continuum together, to this place that I call the X-Zone, always take care of yourself and each other. Good night, everyone.